Connolly's Bookshop. It will come to all of us. First, close off the upstairs, blockading it with banks of books you're not allowed to see or presumed to be interested in seeing. Next, the shelves in the back wall where philosophy was. In due course, the languages will go until, bit by bit, you're marooned in the middle on your high stool amongst the books that show why books are out of date why you must move with the times and be careful what you stop to find Crusoe at the centre of your island. Conley's bookshop was the last surviving of the second hand bookshops in Cork. There used to be a lot of them. There was a very famous one called the Lee Bookstore on the, on the river there, which uh, everybody went to. And it was just good things like selling second hand penguins, you know, a very long time in the 1950s, but nobody else did that kind of thing. And that kept the trade going for a very long time. But it, eventually, Conley's, which is right in the middle, was the shop that everybody went to. It had a, it had a great deal of stock. It used to have and upstairs were pretty filled with more kind of recherche kind of books. And then downstairs was sort of the more general run of second-hand books and, and vinyl um, LPs there as well. Gra gradually, um, I closed down bit by bit like a sort of allegory of, you know, the book trade in a strange sort of way. Uh, they first of all, I closed off the upstairs by covering, filling the stairs with books, you know, so you couldn't get past them. It will come to all of us. First close off the upstairs, blockading it with banks of books you're not allowed to see. And downstairs it gradually kind of uh, retrenched as well. And quite late uh, in its time, before it was closed, I was talking to Adrian Connolly. He was sitting on a, on a stool right in the middle, and he said, I'm, gr I'm gr gradually pulling in the whole operation, pulling it around me, you know, until finally I'll just be sitting here uh, eyeing defiance at everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Until bit by bit, you're marooned in the middle on your high stool. Also, I suppose the other thing that's going on in the point is the second hand bookshop, bookshops generally, that is a kind of mirror of the mind, you know, you know as Shakespeare says, you know, in that uh, 
the, the content of your, of your mind and of your life, you know, is, uh, especially if you're very much involved with books. I mean, I think the voice that is being reproduced at the end of the, at the, end of the poem is a kind of voice of general wisdom, you know, which, is, um, which is not often as the truth, really. Yeah, books are never out of date, really, because they, they, they represent something that, um, that the, the various kind of technologies that set out to replace them just don't replicate at all. That's why and, um, Crusoe is sort of defiant at the end, I think. You know, he's, he's holding his ground. It's the world that's going wrong. But what the poem says about um, you know, the languages go, and next the languages go, you know, so that I, there's an element of the sort of... Um, Dementia, you know, I think about them. In due course, the languages will go. I suppose I see the, the decay and ending of bookshops as a kind of social Alzheimer's, really, as people forget where their, their memory and ideas and thoughts come from and where they're represented, because you lose track of them and you can't um, take them down from the shelf or recall them in your head. You know? So what prompted you to write this poem? Just the conversation with Adrian Conley on that occasion, it struck me as such a remarkable thing to say. And uh, He was a very clever, rather sharp, witty sort of man, you know. So if you asked for a vote that he didn't have, he always said he didn't have it in a way that made you feel a bit small for asking for it in the first place, you know. So he was quite acerbic, uh, with a smile, you know. He was, he was very nice, but I mean, I think he was making the point about, you know, what the the decay of the book trade represented, really. So the meaning of the poem was kind of in him, I think. He famously said, of course, when, um, when he was interviewed when the shop was closing, in this extremely um, uh, valuable piece of you know, real estate, right in the middle of the, uh, just off Patrick Street in Cork. Uh, so they said to him, so the person who takes over this, uh, this premises, what do you think they should do with it? And he said, well, if it was me, I think I'd open a bookshop. So when you write a poem, is it often just inspired by a brief moment? So here you are inspired a conversation. Yes. With and, and the theme obviously attracted you. Yes, that's right. That's but it right. It was yeah, a serendipitous yeah. moment. So there's no grand thinking behind your poem. No, no, there isn't really. No. Um, somebody, said, I think Andrew Motion said once that there are at least two things in a poem. That's all really. And there'll be two things that kind of play off each other. It can't just be a single kind of. Declaration. So the two things there are the the function of the bookshop and uh, what uh, what books and the trade in books represents altogether. In my say early teens, say the the main interest of uh, going to Cork for me was going to the bookshops. Next, the shelves on the back wall where philosophy was, and of course there's also the question of um, real booksellers operating in. Uh, in new books as well. You know. It's a principal involvement as well. I mean, since coming into a, into a shop like this, there's a thrill immediately. The, you know, the Lee Bookstore um, uh, very much had that sense of, um, of centrality in this community. They knew the guy who, um, uh, who ran it. In Irish towns as well, I mean, there, there are very occasionally small bookshops, the, the Caroni bookshop, for example, you know, which is okay for what it does, you know and keeps reasonably kind of abreast of, of, uh, of modern books and uh, uh, you know, popular modern books and also books of, of Irish interest, so, but uh, not really with that sense of, uh, that sense of locality, it's true.